Hey guys, Steve here. Today we're going to be breaking down Friesland v. Loy Yang. Which one should you go for? We're going to try and break it down in terms of, you know, where you're at in your skill, your development. Uh, we'll look at commanders. We're actually going to do that first. And we'll just try and give you as much info and as much my thought process on how to decide. And hopefully that'll help you guys out. Because it is a very difficult decision. Both these destroyers, grade A. All right, so you definitely want to be pursuing these. Uh, before we get too deep into it here, giveaways continuing. We've got more Halloween chess uh, today, and then tomorrow will be the end of the chess giveaways. And then Saturday, the main event. Expected start time, 1030 Central. I do have to house sit across town, so I might be just a smidge late. Don't freak out if it doesn't start right on the dot. But I am planning on being here right at 1030 and we'll get the uh, giveaways going for, uh, you know, all throughout that stream. We're going to have tier fours, tier fives, and then one lucky winner. The grand prize will be the uh, upcoming German premium cruiser Weimar, which we haven't even been able to test out yet. So that should be interesting. Uh, but lots coming up here. Uh, if you want to get involved with this one, let me know in the comments. Gamer tag and uh, what's your system that you play on? So first we're gonna punch it into the commanders here. We can actually look at it uh, from that screen. They're not on here yet. First up, Swirsky. Now this is a guy a lot of people have been looking for for quite a while. And he's been available on the Biscuit, the Boiskovitska, and the, uh, AKA the Boiskovitska, and the Orkin. All right, but those are expensive premiums. Now he's on the Friesland, the European campaign ship option. And that's more reasonable. I think it's ten dollars worth of doubloons. Base trait increase ship consumption rating. So you can put this on cruisers, destroyers, battleships, carriers. You got uh, like we got Bay here. We got Swirsky. This is a double concealment build. Now a lot of people, destroyer players in particular, want to run double concealment builds on every ship. I don't do that. I've had Swirsky almost since the game came out. I got the biscuit quite off the uh, early into my career on this game, and I did run double concealment for quite a while on a lot of them but since then i only run it on swirsky and bay just because they already have their own base trade built in so you essentially get a free extra perk over here but i know a lot of you guys are going to go balls to wall for that that's fine uh and then over here i noticed after my friesland video i actually had the torpedoes selected this is the biscuit build i would normally run uh orkin or biscuit with this setup right here classic twist and tracks so who's always been a strong commander uh, but since we got the Friesland for a couple more days, we'll put it on more of a gun focus. So uh, keep that in mind. But uh, that's Swirsky. Overall, pretty strong commander. If you're going to let the commander decision influence you heavily, um, then the uh, edge goes to Swirsky. There's no doubt about it. Why is that? Well, over here we got Ding Dewey. Okay. And he's named Dewey because he's a, ger or a generic commander. And generally, I wouldn't put any points into a generic commander unless they had a very strong inspiration. But we had to test out the Loy Yang for you guys, so we burned a lot of POs. That's just part of the gig, okay? We get a lot of free premiums to test out and demonstrate for you guys, but we also have to put some POs in the places that you wouldn't want to get them, okay? So, to be fair, the generic commanders do work best on destroyers in my opinion you can get a decent build here this isn't a bad build but no twist and track no radio locator so out of the box we have the only destroyer in the game that currently does not have the option to use the radio locator either the twist and track or the new perk whatever it's called oh nope, nope, nope. or whatever it's called over here uh perceptive okay and then you can debate which one you prefer uh that's fine but both of those tell you the location of the closest, rough location of the closest ship to you. Very, very valuable, especially on destroyers. Uh, so we don't have that option. All right, so the Loy Yang will get better once the Pan Asian line gets released. And we don't know if that's going to be early next year, late next year, never. I would put my money on never not being the correct answer. But how long it's going to take for these guys to become widely available, we don't know. So they could, uh, you could... You could make your decision, I go for the Friesland just because I like Swirsky, and then the next day, when the campaign's over, maybe they <laughs> release the European uh, Destroyer Lion, and that... So I wouldn't personally recommend uh, putting a lot of weight into the Commander, because eventually 
presumably both of these guys will be available, widely available for free. But anyway, some of you guys do like experimenting with these commander, the generic commanders. I've uh, reduced the reload time of your main battery, so we got moored off on destroyers already. If we wanted a double reload booster build, I guess we could put him on there. But I'm not that impressed with Ding personally. Uh, out of the two, I like um, Swirsky better. But I, again, I'm not recommending you guys choose which ship you're going to pursue just on the availability of the commander. And I want to temper your expectations of the power of the double concealment build. Yes, it's a powerful build, but I just feel like there's better options. Okay, I'd rather add HP, for instance, by putting Sims on there or a Tago, reducing the uh, detection of the Torps, Tanaka, increasing the hit point or the damage of the Torps. There's plenty of other options I'd rather go with uh, than Swirsky Double Concealment. But that's the option that you do have available, and I understand a lot of you guys are probably going to get the Friesland just because Swirsky is going to tip the edge in the favor. Anyway, we'll check out the ships now. All right, so jumping into the ships themselves, going into it, I was just kind of assuming... I was going to prefer the Friesland, based on the little I knew about it. I knew Loyang was going to be more of a traditional destroyer. Friesland, pure gunboat specialist with a little bit of an AA suite on it as well. Friesland, no torpedoes, okay? So if that doesn't sound appealing to you whatsoever, then rule that one out. Okay, that's the starter. What's the playstyle of the Friesland? Well, I still run it as kind of a counter-destroyer. Uh, capping specialist, of course, that's basically how I run all the destroyers to their own ability. You got Your approach differs per destroyer, but of course, that's your goal. And you can do pretty well on that, but you have to adapt the playstyle. Right? Now we have an excellent suite of consumables on the Friesland. We got American quality smoke, that means the really long deployment, long lasting smoke. We got an engine boost. Uh, we got sonar, outstanding sonar. On par with the Z-23, essentially the Z-23 sonar, which is now the third most powerful uh, destroyer sonar at the tier. Okay. Only beat by the Loyang, which we'll talk about when we get to that boat. So we got an outstanding smoke sonar combo. We got basically high quality sonar, high quality smoke. We got guns that reload really rapidly. Now I initially wrote down 1.8. Uh, when I changed the build up a little bit, then I got it down to 1.7. If you put on uh, the reload, if you put on Mordoff and even potentially uh, uh, Ding Dewey on their double <laughs> reload build, maybe you could bring it down even further. You know, probably 1.5, give or take. I don't know what the limit of that is, but it's very quickly reloading. Now we got one turret in the front, one turret in the back, two guns per turret. So. Can this thing get outgunned by other destroyers? Potentially. I don't think it's as dominant against other destroyers as you might think. I mean, Fletcher, you got more or less the same reload. I mean, it's a longer reload. I got 2.4 on mine compared to 1.7 on the Friesland. Yes, so it's significantly longer, but we do have an extra gun. DPM, I haven't done the calculations, but I assume they're relatively comparable. Um, but it's... You can get in a little bit more difficulty because if you're forced to kite away, which you want to be doing in a lot of destroyer if you destroyer fights, a lot of times you're only going to have the back turret firing, which is only two guns as to, you know, two or three you might have on other ships. So I'm not saying it's not capable of fighting a lot of other destroyers, but I'm looking at the tier seven destroyers with Pablo, uh, Udaloy. I'm not deep enough into that ship yet to fully understand the capabilities of it. But Tashkent, I think, could probably, you know, it depends on the skill of the player, of course, but... For sure, fantastic, and especially if it's running the reload boost. Uh, for sure, Fletcher and, you know, potentially Pablo and potentially Udale and Tashkent, to some extent, can hang with this thing with the gun. So, you know, the rate of output, the rate of damage output is, you're probably going to win the destroyer fight, but don't go in there thinking it's an automatic win, okay? But in terms of what it can do well, it can deal out a lot of damage, all right? I've been playing... A lot of Friesland, a lot of Loy Yang. I'm really digging both of the ships, by the way. I don't think you can make a bad pick when it comes to this. But the Friesland, you can put out these huge bursts of damage, that 10,000, 15,000 damage per minute, uh, spraying them down, creating fires. And even though, you know, they might be keeping an eye on the damage meter every time you hit them and that's barely moving, 500 here, 500 there. Well, if you're doing that every 1.7 seconds, that's essentially, you know, you're getting between... 
you know, on average, let's say about 750 per salvo, uh, depending on the target. But sometimes you can get over, you know, 1,200, 1,400, whatever it is. So you can put out quite a lot of damage in the Friesland, okay? Where it's going to be difficult, I think it's a higher skill uh, ship. Okay, we don't have the torpedoes, so we cannot defend ourselves when people rush us. So we're going to have to have an immaculate understanding of flow and how to react to the other enemy team's positioning. So if they're closing in on us, how much room can I give them before I'm forced to retreat? How do I react to those situations? you got to have a pretty good understanding of, you know, destroyer positioning, essentially, which I think is a lot of <laughs> watching the destroyer players running around out there. A lot of people struggle with that, okay? Let's just be honest about it. Not the easiest part of the game. These are the parts of the game that take a lot of learning, okay? So we don't expect new players to jump into these ships and play them well. But I'd say between the Loyang and the Friesland, the Friesland's uh, skill ceiling or floor, whatever it is, I mean, it's more difficult for the Johnny Potatoes of the world to play, in my opinion. That said, I think you can have a great time with this ship. So Friesland, if that sounds appealing to you, and we should note AA. Now, I've just introduced the AA stat to my chart. I'm not ever going to really do that deep of a dive on it. All I'm doing is listing the summary number that you would see without zooming in too close to the stats. Where I would say the Fletcher's got a 55 AA rating. Akazuki, 64. Okay. Friesland, 83 rating. So, I mean, all of the destroyers at tier uh, 7, except for the Pablo, which I didn't uh, record until I... When I had that, I wasn't keeping track of the A, A stat at that time. I'll re-record it once I get the Pablo back in the fleet. But from what I can see on my charts, the Friesland has by far the best AA suite on the Tier 7 Destroyer. So another selling point. Carrier's not that prevalent at Tier 7 yet, but someday they're probably... Those carrier players will grind it out and they'll start to populate that tier a little bit more. So overall, Friesland, very good ship. You know, if you can get... if you can. Keep an eye on your positioning. Keep yourself safe. Use island cover. you got to be using island cover expertly. As a cruiser player would be to, you know, you only got so much smoke. And you need to be dealing the damage. Because that's what the ship's out there to do. Uh, pile on the damage when applicable. When, it, when you can safely do so. Then you rack up the damage. Then you might go quiet for a little bit while you're repositioning. Then you go after it again. So that's kind of the play style. If that sounds appealing to you. I think Friesland might be up your alley. Loy Yang, just looking on the ship itself, I thought going into it, okay, well, it's just the another run-of-the-mill torpedo boat probably. What I didn't understand was the super sonar, uh, 5.4 kilometer detection. Uh, let me just check what the hipper is. I think it's 5.6 on the hipper uh, surface detection. So imagine how good the hipper sonar is. We're just a smidge behind it. In this and we got the smoke okay so there is no other destroyer in the game excepting the Orkin who does have the uh, the radar but of course that one doesn't have a smoke so it can kind of counter your smoke sonar combo as can of course radar cruisers in general but I'm just talking about destroyer v destroyer fights any other destroyer if you can keep them past 4.4 uh, which would be uh, the Z 23s sonar range and keep them within your 5.4 surface detection. You got that full kilometer that any other destroyer, they're going to be getting shot while they're pushing into you trying to close that distance. And most of the other destroyers don't even have the sonar. So they're going to have 5.4 kilometers where you can effectively gun them down and you're spotting them for your team, which you're hopefully shooting them down again. Extremely powerful. Okay, so imagine the German destroyer play style on more or less of a USA chassis. You know, we got, it's basically a Benson or a Fletcher knockoff with some alternations. We got four turrets with one gun each instead of the five that we would see on those. So the damage per minute, not quite as strong, but uh, we do have the option to put on Screamer Torps, which we'll talk about on that. But we got the mobility, we got the speed, we got the gun power more or less. You can probably compare it more to a... Uh, uh, Venom or a Sims, those type of ships with the four turrets. Think that in terms of the gun output. Powerful smoke sonar combo. And the torpedoes. You can put on the lazy, ponderous, long-range Benson torps. Uh, you got what well, one option is 9.2 kilometers, 59 knots in the water for a 7.17 second detection. Or a reaction time, rather. And you shave off 
uh, 11 seconds on the reload. So it goes down from 103.7 on the Screamers, which we'll talk about here in a moment, to 92.7. That's if you don't put on the Torpedo mod. And we're about 5,000 damage less with these lazy, ponderous, long-range Torps. Or if you put on the Screamers, 6.7 kilometer range, 72 knots in the water. Not quite as fast as uh, Fantask or Yudachi, but beyond those two ships, you know, the fastest Torps that we currently have available at the tier... Or, I'm sorry, I guess the ZAF-6 looks like that's 79 as well. But overall, pretty fast torps. And, um, you know, 7.48 second reaction time. So they get about a half second uh, more, to, you know, 0.3 seconds actually more to react, which isn't really functionally that much. Um, but excellent torpedo performance, however you want to set it up. If you're comfortable getting close to them, uh, you're more of an experienced destroyer player than I. if you go with the Loy Yang, which you might well want to, uh, I would put the Screamers on. If you're new Destroyer player in either category, I would pick Loy Yang, okay? But we'll go, we'll go more into the which one should we pick here in a moment. But how I would configure it, newer players put on long-range Torps. Uh, more experienced Destroyer players probably put on the Screamers. Mobility, great. We got 39.1. Uh, you know, that's compared to 36.5 in the Fletcher. Outstanding 570 turn radius. That's Fletcher-esque at 560 and the uh, rudder shift 2.6 actually so outstanding uh, Fletcher detection so you put together I mean the consumable suite on either ship is outstanding uh, but the sonar on the Loy Yang in my opinion is probably going to I don't know I still haven't 100% decided for myself Here's the difference between me and you most likely some of you guys have Swirsky but a lot of you guys don't okay I already have him and I have no interest in uh, Ding Dewey whatsoever. Okay, so the factor of the commanders or the commander factor is zero influence on my decision. <coughs> Excuse me. In terms of the raw power of the the ships themselves, I would say Loyang is the stronger of the two, more versatile, and just once you understand how to use the smoke sonar combo, it is so devastating. And the fact that you can put on a screamer package on there as well with good gun platform. I mean, the Loy Yang has really no weaknesses that I can really think of. I mean, it's just a flat-out powerful ship. Friesland, very powerful ship as well. Probably, I mean, I'm going to regret not picking the Friesland if I don't end up getting it. I'm currently leaning towards Loy Yang. But uh, I'll regret the Friesland because it is quite unique, unless maybe the European line as a whole looks kind of like this. I don't know what the status of that line is, but... If they're all more or less similar to this, then I won't quite miss that aspect of it as well. But currently, Friesland more unique. Currently, Loyang more powerful. In my opinion, that's a debatable topic, though. They're both very good ships. If you're planning on skipping this campaign and you like destroyers, change your mind, okay? You're making a mistake here. This is a very good set of ships. And now I can understand the marketing angle of putting these both out there because they're both very good. They're both very des uh, desirable ships. And people are going to be spent, uh, tempted to spend the additional, whatever it is, 17,000 doubloons or whatever. It's a pricey add-on to the fleet, but the temptation will be there. Whether that's worth it to you or not, of course, that's a personal decision. I can't inform that decision at all because that, that's all personal, you know. So that'll come down to you. But that's my breakdown. If I'm you and I don't have Swirsky, I don't have Ding and I don't have either ship, I would probably go with the Friesland, okay? But but again, I, I, I think you need to factor in your uh, relative skill level as well. If you're purely a new player or you're, you're just still learning the game, your win rate's, you know, sub 48%, which is the average, then forget the commander, you know, that you will get the commander eventually. Um, and then the, fr the difficulty of the Friesland should knock that out of consideration for you. So let's go with that route. If you're brand new or you're inexperienced or you're still kind of struggling with destroyers in general, I would pick Loy Yang. Of course, use it at range. If you're a good, if you consider yourself a good destroyer player and you want to factor in the commander and you want to factor in the uniqueness of the Friesland and the powerful nature of the ship, then that would probably factor in it for you. You might regret it if... You know, the next line they announce is the Pan-Asian, or the Pan-Europeans are going to get uh, Swirsky anyways. But that's, you know, 
we have no control over that angle at this point in time. So that's one way to look at it. Or if you're just going to disregard the uh, commander, what's you know completely as I am, then I would probably swing back towards Loyang. But I don't know. Very difficult decision. Like I say, I'm probably going to come down to the wire for me. I'm, but I'm currently probably leaning Loyang. Okay, so I've laid out my considerations for you. I've laid out my thinking. Hopefully that helps you guys. And then I want to hear from you guys in the comments. Probably add that to your comment if you haven't already put the comment in there. Or just comment again. Let me know which one you're leaning towards. And I'm seeing a lot of you guys out there already. So I feel like a lot of people are buying the campaign. They're excited about these destroyers. And I know why. Because they are a powerful pair of destroyers. So let me know what you're uh, planning to think. In addition to putting your screen name and system down to enter the giveaway for today that's gonna do it guys hopefully you did enjoy it if you did please hit the thumbs up new to the channel consider subscribing we got lots of world of warships coming all the time questions comments leave them below love to hear from you and we'll see y'all later peace